I'm going to move uh, next to the receiver portion of the Magnus. I've got a blow up of the receiver circuitry right here. So let's walk quickly through the components and the build plan. So we're going to start uh, down here uh, just after the uh, band pass filter relays here, which we, uh, which is where we left the, uh, uh, the Magnus last video. Um, so we tested all this out and then we move on to this preamp circuitry here. Uh, so this preamp is built around this MMG3 uh, heterojunction bipolar transistor, uh, which comes in a SOT89 package. Um, and, and essentially it's a, it's a BJT, which uses differing materials in the emitter base and the base collector junctions. Um, the upshot is it can maintain high gain uh, to very high frequencies. Um, in circuit, it requires some decoupling caps on the input and the output, as well as this uh, power supply circuitry here and a loading inductor. Now, uh, this loading inductor here is actually a, a, an SMD version. So according to the specs, we should get about a 20, 20 dB gain at the uh, HF frequencies we're using here. So after the, uh, the preamp comes this section here. Uh, so this is essentially a T attenuator, combination of a T atten uh, attenuator, these uh, three resistors right here, plus we have this uh, high pass filter, which consists of these pair of uh, 5.6 nanofarad caps, and then again, another SMD 0.39 microhenry inductor. Um, so we've got some attenuation here, we've got a high pass filter, and also there is matching through to the next stage here through this splitter. So the following stage is, uh, is very familiar to, uh, if, you, if you've looked at any of my previous TALO uh, detector radios, so it consists of this splitter here, which uh, uh, emits the phase and antiphase uh, RF signal that comes in on the input. It's biased at two and a half volts. And the reason for the biasing is, you know, basically uh, to make sure we have a good uh, two and a half volt mid rail bias on these op amps here, as well as uh, for the mixer itself. After the mixer, we have the, the usual uh, FST3253 here, or in this case, it's a 74CBT3253, uh, which is the four to one uh, multiplexer, demultiplexer that uh, you've seen many, many times before. So essentially we get RF coming in here. We get the quadrature LO signal from the, FI, uh, from the SI570 and the dual D-type flip-flops coming in here. And the result is this is a direct conversion mixer where uh, RF gets, mil me gets uh, mixed with local oscillator frequency to produce this uh, audio output here. So 0, 90, 180, and 270 output. Um, and then that output gets further amplified by this pair of op amps here and here finally producing an I and a Q audio signal on this side. Now, where it goes from here is through to the PCM3060 audio codec. And what happens in the audio codec is this, the, these audio signals get digitized. Um, and then the digitized audio signals go through the microcontroller, ultimately through the USB and off to the computer. So as usual, I'll be building up each stage separately. I'll start with this, uh, inject a signal in here. Should see an amplified signal on the output here. I'll probably have to put, uh, I'll probably have to 50 ohm terminate this here to get, uh, uh, to get that in a good state. Uh, I'll test uh, this combination here where we've got the high pass plus uh, attenuator. I'll test it probably right here. I'll put the splitter in and the uh, Taylor mixer and we should be able to see the phase and antiphase uh, uh, RF signal coming out here. And then finally, I'll put the, uh, this op amp uh, network here. And what we should be able to see is if I inject an RF signal in here, mix it with a local oscillator signal, let's say, let's say offset by one kilohertz, I should be able to see an I and a Q signal. So I should be able to see 90 degree audio signal, offset audio signals at one kilohertz coming out here. That's the theory at least. Uh, so uh, let me get the preamp together and uh, we can move on. 
So just to quickly walk uh, through where all that is on the board here. Uh, so here's that uh, input capacity here. Here's the, uh, I forgot to mention actually, this is the, uh, the pair of diode clamps. Um, and here's the space for that uh, MMG3 uh, header junction um, transistor right here. And then you can see it goes off through here. T2 is uh, an SMD um, uh, ballon here, one-to-one -one ballon that does the splitting. Here's the, uh, the, uh, the heart of the TALO detector itself. And then finally, here is that, uh, that, output, um, that output op amp. And so I should be able to probe after this. I should be able to see some INQ signals there. Um, but let's start first with the preamp and make sure that's uh, all installed correctly. Okay, so here's the, uh, the preamp on the circuit here. And just to go over some of the highlights. So that's that uh, clamping diode on the input there. Here's the uh, MMG3 uh, heterojunction um, bipolar. Uh, this is the, uh, the inductor on the, um, the loading inductor on the output of the, uh, of the transistor. Here's the uh, tantalum right here. And note the stripe is the positive side. Uh, this is the ground side. This is the, uh, the positive side. And then uh, I've just got a uh, 47 ohm resistor on the output here for uh, uh, to sort of match the expected load output of the um, uh, of the transistor. So uh, so let's get in and uh, and uh, inject an input signal and uh, check the output. Okay, so just going through the test setup. So I'm probing uh, the oscilloscope's probing right out here. Uh, I am injecting a 7 megahertz signal at minus 20 dBm here. Uh, so let's have a look at the oscilloscope, see what output we're getting. So you can see there, um, we are indeed getting a 7 megahertz signal here, but you can see there's all this other kind of, uh, it looks like low frequency stuff on top of it. And, and indeed, if I sort of pan out you can see that low frequency stuff going on there. Um, so I'm not sure quite what that is. Um, so obviously this is, uh, you know, this is, uh, I'm not quite sure. looks like, uh, I guess, 200 uh, kilohertz is what, the, uh, is what the scope's picking up here. Um, I'm thinking, um, I, I don't know if this is the behavior, the expected behavior uh, in, in this case, but I'm thinking maybe that's the purpose of the high pass filter uh, that I mentioned before is to uh, is to get rid of that uh, get get rid of that lower frequency uh, uh, sort of imprint on the signal. Uh, but anyway, so so we are getting amplification, no question about that. I'm injecting minus 20 dBm, getting nearly half a volt in the output. Um, it is at the expected frequency of of seven. Uh, Seven megahertz, uh, and you can see that if I go down there, that will, uh, uh, that will show seven megahertz. Um, but uh, but you can see there's definitely something going on in the signal there. So what I might do is I'll get the follow-on, uh, the attenuator and the the high pass filter installed up to the um, uh, I'll I'll install up to the splitter, but not the splitter itself. Uh, and I'll see if that changes the uh, the signal at all. So anyway, let me get that installed and we'll come right back. Okay, so I've installed the um, the uh, the T attenuator and the high pass filter in there, and you can see where I'm probing right there on uh, where that splitter goes. That's my 47 ohm uh, resistor for the load there. And hey presto, the signal is is uh, crystal clear so so that's a good thing i i guess that's exactly what the high pass filter is to do is to is to get rid of that uh that low frequency noise I interesting um uh, obviously uh, with that attenuator in place you can see the peak to peak's gone down now from uh from around about uh, 470 ish uh, millivolts peak to peak down to 150 millivolts peak to peak and that's with a 20 db uh, signal on input. So uh, got a nice stable signal on the output there. Um, bear with me. Let's. Uh, so that's at 14 megahertz. Let's uh, try the same at 7 megahertz. So bear with me. 7. Oops. Uh, 7 megahertz. Uh, now I have to change the uh, to the other bandpass filter, of course. 
and there we go. There's a nice clean signal on the output there. Uh, and that's down at about 106 millivolts uh, peak to peak. Um, so, uh, uh, I learned something. Um, that that uh, uh, high pass filter is there to, uh, I guess, to get rid of that, uh, that low frequency noise coming out of the, um, uh, the heterojunction transistor. Uh, I, I guess that's what it is anyway. Uh, I, I don't know what else it could be for. So anyway, what I'll move on to next is I'll get the splitter installed. Um, once the splitter is installed and there's a few uh, associated uh, caps with that, I'll be able to move on and I should be able to probe the, uh, the I and the Q output in the next step. So that would, be a, uh, that would be a good thing to see. Anyway, that's coming right up. Okay, so that's the uh, remainder of the receiver circuitry installed. So up the top here is that splitter. Uh, this is a pair of filtering caps. Uh, this is a voltage divider that puts uh, 2.5 volts at the uh, center tap of, uh, of T2. Uh, we have the four uh, uh, 0.01 uh, microfarad caps here as part of the TALO detector. Uh, the eagle-eyed of you will notice I, these are supposed to be 49.9 ohm resistors here, R9 and R8. I thought I had some, but I don't. So I've substituted 51 ohm. We'll see how that goes. And then finally, we have a pair of 1K resistors um, this is the sort of the amplification circuit right here. Um, and then finally we have the op amp there. Here, notice the uh, dot to the bottom. And so what I should do, uh, I should be able to sort of pass a signal through here and we should see, uh, we should see an audio output uh, out of this op amp. But uh, we'll see. Um, that's to come. Okay, so... Uh with this setup, we've basically got everything we need to, to hear some audio out of HD-SDR. So I'll be injecting an RF signal in here. Um, all the sort of TALO detector circuitry is, is all set up. Um, the output of this uh, op amp here goes through uh, the, co uh, the audio codec, gets digitized, processed in the uh, main microcontroller, and out the USB uh, to uh, HD-SDR. So, Let's uh, inject a signal and uh, we should be able to hear the result. Okay, so I've got the uh, volume turned down. Uh, as you can see, I'm uh, injecting a 14 megahertz signal at minus 70 dBm. Down on uh, HD-SDR, you can see here I'm actually tuned to... I'm on upper side band, so I should hear a 1 kilohertz tone at if I tune to 13999. Uh, and indeed we do. So let me just turn the volume up so you can hear that. Okay, so if I tune away from that, uh, if I tune down, the tone should go up. And there it goes. And as you can see, there's, uh, there's that peak of the audio uh, coming from the direct conversion uh, against 14 megahertz. Um, so that's upper sideband. Let me go to lower sideband. So you can see nothing. We hear nothing uh, at this point, which is expected. It should be suppressing that... Uh, uh, the upper sideband now, so let's tune up. And there's a 1 kilohertz tone. You can see I'm tuned one, uh, 14001, still injecting that uh, same signal there at minus 70 dBm. So what else can we do? So let's uh, go to the, um, the signal generator and uh, change the frequency it's operating at. So you can see that's indeed receiving that signal. Uh, minus 70 dBm. Uh, let's change the amplitude we're, uh, we're receiving at. Let's go all the way down to minus 110 dBm. Now what I'm going to have to do now is, see, so you can still see the signal there. It's way down there close to the noise, but I can increase the gain. It's barely getting it out there. So just turn up the volume a bit so right down at minus 110 dBm we can still hear a uh, a signal so that's basically the uh, uh, Magnus receiver all complete receiving signals um, the only thing left to do uh, would be uh, get it on the air and see if we can hear something uh, I actually don't have my antenna up out the back at the moment so I'm gonna have to put that up um, what I will do is uh, I'll wrap this video at this stage I think we've got uh, 
we've got good success through here, through the audio pathways. Um, everything appears to be working. I've got it hooked up to HDSDR. We can uh, tune up and tune down in HDSDR, and we're seeing uh, upper and lower sideband uh, appropriate other sideband suppression in there. So uh, all good there. Um, obviously, uh, what, what I'll probably move on to next is the uh, transmit side. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of uh, the board remaining to be populated here with the, uh, with the Talo mixer, which I believe is around, around about here. There's all the amplifier circuitry and there's, you know, there's some, some on, the, on the back of the board too. So that'll be in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, um, catch you all later.